So it's an 11 point game, second three of the night for Garland. Jalen Brown coming with some heat for the Celtics. What's going on? Celtics post game live. Tom Giles, Eddie House, Scal. Celtics with a 120 to 95 win over the Cleveland Cavaliers in game one here of the Eastern Conference semifinals. A 25 point win. You saw Jalen Brown right there. He led the way with 32 points for the Celtics. What'd you like about that win, Scal? Everything. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We saw this in game one against Miami, but it looks like one team is just outclassing the other team at this point. And I don't know where the Cavs go besides just trying to bomb more threes. And again, Jason Tatum, he's leading the team in rebounding, right? Finding other ways to affect winning, finding other ways to produce winning for his team. Not being a guy that like, oh, I got to get more shots. I got to score points because we see it a lot in, in this league. Guys start scoreboard watching like, well, I got to get 20. I got to get 30, you know, and I don't think he has that mentality. Um, this was a thorough uh, but yeah, yeah. there was a We're thorough good. ass kicking. Oh, there you go. There he goes. From start there to go. finish. Our producer, our boss started. He started. Oh, wait a you minute. You told Eddie. me to say it. I, so I just wanted you to. You set hear. me up? Okay. Kev, is that okay? Okay, cool. I got the thumbs uh, we up. Have, okay. I had a thorough <laughs> ass whooping. <laughs> Well, it was what it was, right? And you call it as it is. And Jalen Brown, the, the 32 points, set the tone in the first half. We talked about it at halftime. He had the 20 points. But just what what did you like about his game tonight, Eddie? Well, I thought he was aggressive, off, off rip. From the start to the finish, he did not take his foot off the gas. I think that when we heard him say that there's no friends, right? Yeah. No friend zone, right? No friend zone. He ain't friend zone to nobody. He went to work. I believe what he's saying. I really do believe Not in the talk. playoffs. Not in the playoffs. Ain't no partners. No, no. And you know what? We saw versatility today. Threes, layups, post up, fadeaways, defense. inside, dunks, defense. He did it all. So, I mean, Jalen Brown was, once again, there's no one that can match up with him. When he took Mobley to the basket, you guys just saw that, spun off him and laid it up. Like, that's their center. That's their defensive anchor. And our guy is going in there giving them the business. 32 again for uh, JB. 12 of 18 from the field. Really efficient night with his second 30-point game of this postseason. Uh, we did see Donovan Mitchell get 33 in this game. But to me, the Cleveland Cavaliers were 6-12 from three in the first quarter when they got 34 points. They were 5 of 30 the rest of the way. Was that them just missing shots or the Celtics really locking up defensively? I thought they were locking them up. They, they left a Coro early. I thought they cleaned that up. The, the Cavs tried to put, play more shooting, but when you contain the ball and you have to play a guy one-on-one -on -one and you're able to do that, you don't have to help and all of a sudden you can take away the three. That's what I was saying at halftime. Remember I was saying, hey, just make sure you just defend your guy. Don't overhelp. Don't get Get, uh, caught up in trying to don't first off don't get beat off the dribble because once you get beat off the dribble then guys are going to start helping because it's your natural instinct and I thought that we did a fantastic job I don't think they're a great three-point shooting team there's some guys on there that can knock down the threes Okoro was an anomaly tonight I don't think he'll be able to shoot and, a, and if he is the guy that they're going yeah. to they will not win this series they're not. They have the ability to be a good three-point shooting team. When they were, they had a stretch in, I think it was January, February. Outside of that stretch, you know they were below 500. But during that stretch, they were averaging like over 17 threes made a game. That's when they're at their best. They, they weren't at their best today, the way that they were playing. But that, listen, moving forward, I said the same thing about Miami. Like Miami came and hit 23 threes on us. That's the thing we have to make sure we take care of. If we do that, this is not a series. Okay. Uh, Derek White, by the way, 25 points in this one, 14 in the second half. Stand by with Abby down on the floor. Derek, a very business-like approach from you guys. How were you able to hold this Cavs team to just 95 points? Compete in a high level. Uh, we got to be a lot better. Uh, we know they're going to be better for game two, so we got to be better. And a lot of mistakes we made, so we got to be better. What do you mean? Uh, transition, just giving them easy looks, uh, losing matchups, stuff like that. It just you can't you can't happen in this level. So uh, we'll be better. Offensively for you, no rust, hit seven threes. What did that rim look like? Just trying to get good looks, get good shots, and knock them down when I take them. So uh, just got to keep going, and uh, a lot of credit to the team. Good enough to hear Derek White chants multiple times in this arena. How did that feel? 
I love it here in Boston. I love the fans, and they're amazing. How big was Jalen Brown coming out, setting the tone in this game for you guys? He was great the whole game. Uh, just made the right play, um, competed defensively. Uh, he, he was a big reason we won tonight, and uh, he was amazing. And you get the 25-point win without Kristaps Porzingis. Luke Cornett coming off the bench. Why was he barking at you guys? Yeah, Luke was amazing. I think he changed the game. Offensive rebounds, uh, his energy, uh, his uh, infectious spirit uh, is amazing. He was amazing today. No question. I think you were too, Derek. Thank you so much. Congrats. Appreciate it. All right, I don't know if you can hear Derek White at home. We couldn't hear him here, but his play did all the talking in the second half. Again, what? It's, it's like, what more can you say about Derek White? He's just so consistent. I just think any time the Cavaliers made a mistake, Derek White took advantage of it. Knocked down a big three, got a matchup. I mean, Derek White, he's the guy that, that pushed us over the hump. I'm not, we weren't a championship-level team until we got traded here. And since that moment, we've been a championship-level team. Can't, he's just a winning player that makes winning plays. And, Scal, you know this. There's certain players that could go get numbers like that on a night-to-night -night basis that aren't winning players. But this guy can get these numbers. And he affects winning in so many different ways. He's a winning player. And that's, to me, that's one of the questions. That's the biggest looming question for this team moving forward. What are we going to do with Derek White? We don't got to worry about that right now. Let's just get this chip. <laughs> well, we're going to get that, but yeah, I, we want to get multiple. Yeah. Yeah. We're Let's not just, just looking for we one. We got this year and next year. We don't have to worry about that. He's 7 Man. and 12 from three. <laughs> Yes. 7 to 12 from 3. Yeah. <laughs> 20 threes, 20 threes for Derek White over the last three games. Yeah. You go back to Miami and, and that game five closeout game. I mean, he's just, he's always making the right read, the right, the right play, and, and sometimes that's him going 7 to 12 from 3. I mean, he, he's just an elite player. Like, I don't, he's a role player for us, but people in the round of the NBA think he's a difference maker. Well, he's been well coached. I always talk about where he got coached in college at Colorado with Tab Boyle, but then also going right from getting coached great in college to going to Popovich and being coached well in the NBA, understanding exactly what it is to win and how to sacrifice and pick your spots. I mean, he's a phenomenal player. He also had uh, Drew Holiday coming up with 14 points. He had 10 in the second half. It felt like that third quarter, right? Celtics had a 10-point lead at the break, and he had Derek White making a couple of threes, and then Drew Holiday also makes it in a couple threes there. It's it's like even when Jason Tatum's got 18, you're getting contributions from everybody. I mean, we just thoroughly beat these, this team. So no matter where we went today, we had it going. Well, it, it was a clean game. Think about it. Nobody had more than 10 turnovers in this game, either team. But we just shot the ball better. We defended better. We got our matchups. We were able to play to our play at our pace when we wanted to. We played fast when we wanted to. We played slow when we wanted to. Like you said, a thorough uh, beatdown. How about the uh, bench in this one as well? You saw Peyton Pritchard going for 16 points. One of the biggest shots of the game, or at least the loudest shot of the game, was the end of the third quarter. Peyton Pritchard launching. It's just what Peyton you know, Pritchard does. He's the designated guy for that. Yeah. He doesn't ever eat the ball. He gets it late, late clock. He'll shoot a half quarter. He'll, he'll, they all know it. They don't want to mess up their, their field goal percentage. And Peyton Pritchard has no problem with it. That's the reason why he's made, I think, three of them this year. He has, man. He, he has beat the buzzer like three times this year. But I was a dude that would eat the clock, like in a regular season. You would eat the ball? No, I, I would take an extra dribble. Like, yeah. You would eat it. And then act like... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, be like, eh, oh, okay, make it look like I did it. Because I, I didn't want to mess my percentage up. But in playoffs, it's totally different. All right. As you can tell, everyone's excited. 120-95. Celtics get the win here in game one against the Cleveland Cavs.